Hi everyone, you're very welcome to this week's episode of Parallel Pod, the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, click the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and updates. If you're listening on audio only on Spotify or Podbean, please click follow and please check out my vlog and channel, Pitch Spotting a Pod, with loads of exciting vlogs to come. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by two former guests on the Parallel Pod, the podcast, who are combining, and there'll be a lot of that in the coming months. With the help of God, Key Taylor and Mark Bradley, they've come on to have a chat about Liverpool's great success in the League Cup final, Carabao Cup final on Sunday, and to have a chat about the rest of the season as well. So, Les, thanks, Miller, for coming back on the show. It's great to have you back by the fireside again. Nice to see you, Mason. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, uh, <laughs> LFC <laughs> tribute here. Awesome. Cheers, everybody. No, no, you've got Carabao, no? <laughs> no, no, don't need it. I'll do me with money. <laughs> so, no, uh, no, but it's, uh, I don't think thoughts? any Everton fans are in Chang either, do they? So it, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just first of all, obviously, I don't know about you, was on the verge of getting sick halfway through that penalty shootout when it started getting into seven and eight. It's tin stuff, wouldn't it? I'm a tense afternoon overall. Like. Yeah. I, I don't know about you two, but I was um, I was getting annoyed with the um, the shushing. It started with um, uh, Lukaku, didn't it? He was shushing. And then James, who I don't know who he is like. And then uh, Georgino done it as well. And the one thing that was annoying me was Kepa's antics, you know, um, off his line constantly. And, you know, that's gamesmanship. And, you know, the referee should have done something. He should have booked him. Should have booked him and said, carry on doing it. I'll show you the red. I, I, I just, just didn't understand his, his thinking behind it. But, look, in hindsight, it didn't matter anyway, did it? He was rubbish. Yeah, it makes it more sweet, I know. It's, uh, yeah. You know, it's funny because the gamesmanship, we were used to it, weren't we, with Mourinho? And, and obviously, he was leading the call with all that in the beginning. And, yeah. And then it sort of came through in that on, at the weekend. And yeah, I mean, I don't like game shape anyway. Sometimes you used to when it's a European night and if it's a, you know, if it's a Spanish side, a Portuguese side, an Italian side, especially, but you know, you don't normally get it in an English side, you know, and, and they did it all game. And then we throw, we throw back and show, if anything, we show how good, how, how good we are as a, as gentlemen like in sports. We're like, look at, you only have to look at Henderson at the end there and, and, and Millie, when it come, does are coming down. They know they've been in it. It's a bit like boxers in it in respect. You, you, yeah. You're sucking their hands. That wouldn't have happened a few years back with them, and they've, they've did it because they know they've been in respect. But I think they also to have done that after after all the play after the game and, and all this, you know, because I'm getting wound up watching it. You know, it's just you know, it's just it's just childish, really, in my opinion. But there you go. What I didn't yeah. get about Kepa being brought on right was that three years ago, the infamously. Sarri tried to substitute him in the League Cup final for Willy Caballero for the penalty shootout because Willy Caballero had a good record in penalties and just three years later has he suddenly become brilliantly at saving penalties that he's brought on specifically for a shootout? <clears throat> well, I, I spoke to um, I was talking to Peter Reid today and Reid really said apparently the uh, statistics and training uh, Kepa's was Far superior than Mendy's in his in the um, his penalty saves, so that was the thinking behind it, I, I, I suppose, and, and that. But um, that Mendy was like you know, uh, the save from Mane especially, you know, was was sort of out of this Bending, world, wasn't yeah. special. But, um, and he's a great he is a great keeper. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it. The lad is is a great keeper, and that. And when when he took him off, I was I couldn't. You wouldn't, Klopp wouldn't have done that with Kelleher. No, no. We we, we, yeah. we haven't got him brought back on because obviously, oh, in, in a shot, you know what he's like in penalties as well. He's probably one of the best out there as well with Becker. And he stayed with Kelleher throughout the whole thing and showed respect for him, which is gains him more respect and loyalty there. And we haven't done that. And I just think that's a bit of karma at the end. I'm thinking, I felt sorry for him because he had, had a cracking game for Chelsea, you know, and... Yeah. Forget, forget anything that happens in training. You could be banging penalties or saving penalties in a yeah. game, it's them pressure situations. And that's what else I was proud about because it, it looked like it could have gone on forever. 
when you got someone as young yeah. as Harvey, it didn't buckle in that situation. And Kelleher as well was going on to take that and becoming the decisive penalty and winning it, and good penalty as it was. They didn't buckle. And they're right behind our own fans, which I know that can affect their players, but it can also affect us as our players because you're playing and getting front of your own fans and they're, they're sucking it in, which is great, but number side. So, that, you know what? There's not enough plots have gone down for the youngsters there to be able to have done that. Harvey's 18 years of age. Oh, my God. You know, what a career yeah. this guy's going to have. You know, in another 10 yeah. years, he's only going to hit peak. He's only going to be getting to a point where he's at his at his peak years and he's going to be in his prime. You know, we've got 10 yeah. years with him to learn his trade around some of the best players right now in the world with, with, um, with Mo and stuff. But I just think, yeah, if I was the goalkeeper, I, I, I'd have, he would have gone down me. I suppose, you know, they've had a plan before the game, apparently. I don't know and what you said with the training, but I just think I just think it was wrong. He'd had a great game. He's probably on a high. The guys coming on cold, so maybe it's a bit of you know a bit of uh, karma there for for, for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Talk about Dyke's penalty was brilliant. You know, like he literally ultimate alpha male moment there, like putting the penalty right in the same spot where kept was standing, like you know, and kind of the stare <laughs> afterwards, like you know, I don't care where he's standing, I'm still going to score, like. Yeah, I think it was the lucky game after it, which was just classic, you know. Yeah, it was just scored. <laughs> you know, it was just brilliant. And I think, you know, Liverpool teams down the years, and I'm talking before Klopp, um, probably would have bottled it. Yeah, I think you're right, yeah. You know, even under Rafa and, and that, obviously not under um, Paisley and, and, and Shanks and that, but, you know, after that, I think, Probably would have bottled it, you know. Um, yeah, I think you're right, and I think what else it summarises, Keith, is that as a whole whole thing at the moment is, you know, even listen. I know we're very rarely going down at one nil or something, but as an example, if we go down in a game now at one nil years ago, we we go and play playing against Chelsea, your City, as well. We raise our game. Following week, we could go to a, a Burnley or a Weather, and then we just we just have a problem. We can't compete on every level. But also, if we score, we got con- we concede one. Sometimes you, know, oh, here we go. Now, yeah. if we can see one, I don't think shit we're going to lose. I think we're, we're still going to win this. And even when we're yeah. four, five nil up at 19 minutes, we're still trying to score more in the 90 second, 90. And we're, you, know, you, you don't you don't lose confidence in a way. You just think, and it's treating every game as well with the same respect in the sense of every tournament because we we can now compete with a squad, aren't we? Now we're not a team who can beat anybody on the day. We're, we've got a squad that can compete on every level every week. So. And that's so important. But then everyone says, how is he going to keep these players happy? That's how he keeps the players happy because yeah. you keep the squad happy by being involved in more tournaments. We used to di- we ditched the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup in the past because the big we needed to be okay in the Champions League. We needed to be okay in the league. And now he's going, well, actually, we, can't, we don't have to ditch them. We've got a squad capable enough to keep them all fit, play them around, play 10 changes last, last night, 10 yeah. changes. And, that, and he did it in a sense from what he said from his after post-match interview with Klopp is, 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 well, you need to keep the, the other guy, i.e. something, because they're such on such a high by the sound of it, he's just thinking, well, you know, the other guys are chomping at the bit, Let them, they've missed what's out on there, so they're getting in there, and also the guys decide to probably drained and they've also played into the extra time, so then he's thinking the whole thing, and you know what? Do you know, we this guy now we don't look how lucky we are. He's he's when you yeah. talk about signings, you talk about bringing in future players, sorting those that contract. This is the guy we need to nail down. Yeah, honeymoon. We'd all love a future of maybe ten years in Stephen Gerrard, whether he keeps playing this trade. But people, sort of, this is the big. This is the biggest manager, and I'm making a statement right now. And go don't, don't care what anyone else thinks because I think everyone is saying it out loud, but they admit it. This is the best manager we've had, if not equal to. Till Shankly, this guy is it, you know. And to be in the modern day of football here, doing what he's doing is just, um, for me, uh, you know, yeah. he needs to keep the city. You know, he's just happy. He's that good. Yeah, I've mentioned Sorry. today that he's. I've mentioned today a couple of times that he's the modern day Shankly. Hundred yeah. percent reincarnated. Just about the League yeah. Cup, you know. I'm not going to lie and say I want this to be a priority at the start of the season, but. You know, it reminds me like there was a Man City fan I know that when Man City didn't win the League Cup, he'd always called the Two Bob Cup or Mickey Mouse or whatever. But he was very happy to claim it as a trophy when City did win it. You know, and then kind of it's like that when you get to a final, you want to win it, like you know. And I suppose Liverpool have a record for the most League Cups as well with nine, so it's a proud tradition with it. Um, interesting stat: Liverpool's three out of the last four League Cups have been won on penalties. 
Birmingham City. Oh. Birmingham City 2001. Cardiff 2012. Cardiff. Yeah. And I actually, I was actually at the one in Cardiff, which was one of the tense games I was ever at in my life. I'm wearing the jersey from that final as a, in honour of that. I think the 82 one as well. This is maybe the track suit. Have you watched that top since then? Sorry? <laughs> Have you washed it since that one? Yeah. <laughs> a few times uh, with her eye for the like, but um, no, I, that was just a point I just wanted to make as well. It's ten year anniversary almost to the day of winning it in twenty twelve against Cardiff, and I just want to call out and I want to put the, the photograph up as well so people can see it on YouTube of the Liverpool team that won in twenty twelve, and just compare it to now. So Pepperina and goal back four: Glenn Johnson, Martin Scartle. Daniel Agger, Jose Enrique, midfield Stephen Gerrard, Charlie Adam, the common denominator Jordan Henderson, Luis Suarez, Stuart Downing, Andy Carroll. On the bench, Donny, Jamie Carragher, who came on as a sub, Martin Kelly, Maxi Rodriguez, Jay Spearing, Dirk Coat, Craig Bellamy, who both came on as subs. Just compare that to, to, to this year's team now, okay? Quiven Kelleher in goal, Trent, Matip, Van Dijk, Robertson, Henderson again, Fabinho, Keita, Salah, Mane, Diaz, on the bench, Allison, Canate, Simicas, Milner, Chamberlain, Elliot, Minamino, Jota, Origi. So I think to be a tight enough game if they played each other, lads, what do you think? Well, that team from uh, 2012 was much better than this one now, isn't it? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just, honestly, right, you look at if. So if I looked at that compared to now, there's only two players, but really one, because I would have Henderson in this team now. Okay. Starting. There's only one, uh, sorry, there's only two other players in that team from 2012 that I would have in this one now, just to Glenn talk about Johnson, yourself. Me, I'm, um, when I looked at it when Pod sent over last night, I was like, first, first reaction was, look how far we've come. Yeah, and the re- the biggest the biggest comparison of that is is I love Pepe. Pepe was a great goalkeeper, and I think it was a shame we had a spine then, and it was a shame really that he, there wasn't more room with him. And he's a great. I think at the time Pepe was dead. I think he was third choice goalkeeper for Spain, but every he kept getting in, and he was, he was like the captain in the playing field, and he was always around the Spanish team because he was like Casillas and everyone else around there. So he was a. I like Pepe a lot, and. If you so that's one person starting at the back, I'd say either got in that team compared to Keller, even though he's, he's doing really well. But that shows me strength in our squad right now. Our first choice goalkeeper would have normally got it. We didn't have a second choice goalkeeper to go and do what we did yesterday to rest the player and being what Klopp said, he's the best second choice you, you could have and do what he done. We'd have had to gone with Allison. We wouldn't have put someone else in. So the so starting at the back there, bang. Shocked me when I looked at the bench. I'd have to look back and look at what was the situation. Was there injuries or what? Because I was, why was why was Carragher on the bench for that for that game? I can still can't remember to stay. And I was I was there, so I can't remember what what the reason for that was. But then when I looked at you said alongside, I was a big fan of that Daniel with Aga. Loved him with his you you never walk alone tattoos and all that, and he was really good and he was consistent. In fact, he was very similar to what we've got now with Matip. And before that, I used to say Aga was similar to a. To, uh, to Alan Hansen, he could play out from the back and he was a really, really talented footballer. Something seemed to change when Rodgers come in that didn't sort of fancy him. Uh, so when I look at the back there, can you imagine Daniel Agger, in my opinion, anyway, you can imagine Daniel Agger alongside bloody Van, Van, Van Dyke. I mean, <sighs> Jesus Christ, you know, that to me would be a fantastic partnership because they're both football and attributes of players and very gifted and you'd have Agger with the, with the strength of what he does. So I so I looked at that like that. I would probably have put him before certain people on type Van Dyke. And then I went, obviously, Stevie, the pl- things that he goes on. Oh, we've got a great Rolls Royce of the field at the moment, but I always find found somewhere for Stevie Gerrard. And I think, oh, Jesus Christ, someone put something on the other day on Facebook, and I was like, you're going, oh, we go on about what goes on with the current current side. And but Gerard, um, Hendo's done this. He's a younger, obviously a younger fan. Gerrard, Hendo's done this. Gerrard is just like has not won the same sort of thing. He's obviously young and he's trying to compete so against what he's done. Can't take away what Anderson but, but Stevie was carrying that team most of the time single-handedly. Yeah. Could you imagine yeah. Stevie having all those luxury players around him? 
and the pressure off him and just being able to express himself and, and have three or four leaders like you've got now. So Stevie would go in there. This it is three I would probably put in with Yorkshire. And then Louis, I think, is one of the best players we've seen, Louis Suarez. So and then you start thinking, well, where would you disrupt it? Where we look back two years ago with Manny doing what he was doing, but then you look at last season though, and now okay, he's still can some season season, so he's doing and Bobby's getting to the end of his thing. So but I looked at it and go, Mo's doing what he's doing is his numbers. Salah did what he did, sorry, um Suarez did with what he did with England combined, although they may not play like the old, like as a team, but you'd probably think if they could. And then it actually shocked me this week. And I think, well, forget Bobby and his bank thing. Within a week, I'm already talking about Louis Diaz. I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, this guy is settled in. So he's waving. That, that ball the other day comes over his shoulder. He gives the guy the eyes and comes back over the other side. And this lad's still a young enough player and he's just settled in like, he, like he's been there up for, for season on season, which is refreshing. So I'm not going to play. So I'd probably got three or four there, but there's certain players when you look at some of the dead wood we had and we don't have dead wood now. We're coming off games from the bench and I'm thinking, Jesus, we've got a squad. We're bringing night players, three or four players. It's night and day in that decade. Like, you know, it was great to yeah, win, but yeah. to win a, a league. I assume, Keith, you were just saying before there that Gerard and Suarez would be the two that you may consider picking from 2012. Yeah, so I would have, I'd actually would have kept Keller and uh, Keller and goal. I love Pepe, don't get me wrong, but he was prone to mistakes. Um, and the other thing is, is that the way they play it out from the back now, yeah. one of Pepe's weaker uh, things was his kicking and his, he was good with his distribution, quick distribution, but the ball of his... Yeah. Yeah. So I'd have, I, and I, I get where you get from, come from with Aga. I love Aga, but Matip for me... The way he brings the ball out is is uh, set pieces. He's six foot. Is he six foot four, six five? I think he's very underrated, Matip. It's just the fact that he's yeah, been yeah, yeah, injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been injured so many times. Last week, the yeah. six nil. No, last week, I could have been a striker, couldn't he? <laughs> so that, yeah, it's just, he just kept going, didn't he? Just kept going. I just think he's. I, I think he's class. You know, I do. I think he's absolute class, Matip. When he's, you know, he's prone to mistakes, but you know. Would you rather have him or Harry Maguire in the team? You know what I mean? So, you know, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Um, I'd have Stephen Gerrard in instead of Cater. Um, Cater still, you know, for the time he's been there, has been worse than Matip for injuries and uh, his, his stamina and, and his sort of uh, tracking back. I mean, I love the way he took Mount out. Uh, that was great. But other than that, is you look at him, especially with... What was the game he got subbed a half, which was before half time? Was it Real Madrid or Barca? Mm. I can't remember what it was. And he got subbed before half time. He's done that twice to him clock now. Um, so I'm still not convinced with with Kater, I've got to be honest. But um, definitely Stevie G with imagine Stevie G in a forward position with Fabino and Henderson, just just oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Then I'd have Suarez down the centre, Mo on the right. But my biggest decision would be between Diaz and Marnie. That is difficult. Yeah. And yeah. Marnie, or Andy Carroll as well. Andy Carroll should be in there. Like, you sound like he's sweating for his... Honest to God. Do you know, honestly, I will never... I mean, there's only a number of very, very few players that I wouldn't have time for. Um, El Hadj Diouf is, is, is number one. Um, Andy Carroll's another one. The fact that he came out and said, when I went to Liverpool, I didn't know any of the players. That's bull. That's rubbish. Come on. It, unless you've got to be thick. Is it, maybe it, maybe yeah. he's thick. It's but, he was representing England on an England scale. He was there with, down there with Stevie and Endo and that when they were down there because he was one of the English players to go down there with England from, from Newcastle. He was trying. Yeah. yeah but, he had a good time of there. Everyone, if you're even if you, whether you're a football fan or a football, you would have heard of Rayner, you would have heard of Skirtle, you would have heard of Aga, definitely Glenn Johnson, um, Stevie G, Carrie, you, you know, Bellamy. Yeah. It's, that is it's almost, rubbish. It's, it's I, almost disrespectful, isn't it? Saying you didn't know it's, it is. It's, it's like, um, when, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, the what, number nine for Newcastle, Pure. oh, God. Alan the old, the old nine and, and he went to um, when he came to Anfield. 
Malcolm and McDonald. He around, Malcolm McDonald turned around and he said, Joe Harvey and said, have we come to the right place? Because they were looking at the, this, um, this is Anfield sign. I mean, Shank said, oh, you'll see, listen, son, you'll soon find out. And he said, we, we beat them 5-0, I think it was 4-5-0 the other day. And he said, they were terrified. But that was a lack of respect for me, you know, uh, yeah. from 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 uh, Alison, Malcolm Allison, uh, Malcolm Andy Carroll, sorry. And, um, and, I mean, and Andy example Carroll. there, when you think of the two players, you think of Andy Carroll saying that, and he brought him in. And from what I heard at the time from a good source is, we didn't have long. So basically, we didn't, everyone criticised Liverpool for spending £50 million on him. But it wasn't, the deal was done between, from what I'm told, and don't quote me on this, from what I'm told, the deal was done between Chelsea and Newcastle. So whatever Chelsea were prepared to pay for Torres to go, the money went the other way. And then that's where, was, and Kenny just said, well, listen, this is money-wise of the way the player is with Torres, with the be- if I'm like, I'll probably rather have the best youngest, and he was at the time meant to be the best youngest in this town coming through and doing what he was doing. So that's that put a price tag unfairly maybe on his head, but it did. But then if you look at the comparison, Kenny brought in Hendo. I mean, and at the time, I'll, I'll openly admit this, I'm, and I've, I've, I've eaten me late more than one occasion, I'll admit to it. Jordan was the same then, and I'll never forget when we had Lucas as well, and when he could first come in, especially with Hendo sideways backwards, like watching an Austin yeah. wake up going away. Like, and, and, and I ain't we been two, three scenes, I'm saying, and, 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 it's just, and because I was immature then as well, I'm thinking he's not good enough to do, lace Stevie's boots, even though there's no reason for him to do so. And, things. and yeah. Jesus Christ, he has gone on to be not only a great footballer, I love his passion, I love the way he sees his crown, everything he leaves on the field, seeing him crying in, in, in the final, because just it means so much to him. It, and you know what? That, that he, what he, he's done is not only gone on to succeed as a player to what he's lifted, but he has successfully. Under yeah. that pressure to, to take over that mantle, they said about yeah. taking over Alex Ferguson's mantle as a manager for managers and players. But on a football field, you're actually you're not in anyone else's control. It's up to you. You're in the microscope. He is yeah. the top under just the greatest a, pressure, and I think just, it's harder than anybody. Absolutely, no, he's, only, he's only an FA Cup away from from, from every honour as well in the game. Yeah, in Liverpool, just a, a nice guy as well. You know, just a nice guy as yeah. well. Just you know, anyway, sorry. Yeah, sure. He is a nice guy. Just a word on the hero of today, Quivine. Um, just a, an interesting set. He's a club record for most successful penalty shootout to Liverpool, which is an interesting one as well. But I was absolutely delighted. I was so proud of him as a Cork man. Well, I'm from Limerick originally, but living in Cork a number of years to, to be, you know, playing for Liverpool in a cup final. Made some brilliant saves in regulation time. Mason Mount had an absolute horror with one or two of them, but they still had to be saved in fairness, and he, he stood up he stood up strong and proud. When you're a goalkeeper preparing for a cup final and a penalty shootout, you don't expect to take one yourself. But he absolutely smashed it. You know, that was yeah. Bobo Van Dijk's penalty, like the, the balls that took to bury that penalty, you know, it was phenomenal. Like, and I have a feeling if if there's any other goalkeeper ahead of him, I think he'd be playing every week. And I think the future, I can see him being number one for Liverpool in years to come. Would you agree with that? Um, the calmness he exudes as well, I think. Just his, If he's still at the club, I can. But, but I can see Ali being number one for a long time. There's no way. If um, if Quivium has got ambitions moving forward, um, I can't see him staying at the club, but I can see him returning once Ali maybe has... Is gone or if he move, Aldi moves on. Um, I can't honestly. I was talking, I, I, I don't mean to drop names, I promise you. But I spoke to Peter Shilton on uh, on Tuesday and I said, What do you think of Keller? And he said, I was unbelievably impressed. Unbelievable. He said, To come in and perform the way he did. Such, and he said, Well, you've got to remember, a goalkeeper doesn't mature until his late 20s, you know. Yeah. And for him to come in at that age, you know, a young lad, 20, I think he's 22, is he? 22 or 23, yeah. I think, yeah. 22, um, to come in at that age and perform the way he did, but he said it was the confidence of him. He, he couldn't, he said, he, he, he seems like, he said, he seems like quite a, um, a quiet young lad, he said, but he, he had this air of, like, confidence, but mm. sort of very laid back, you know, Um and he said the difference, you know, have you seen the difference between him and Kepa in the penalties? 
who kept us trying to put the players off and all that. He said he didn't once see Kellis doing that. Um, and I asked the question, you know, can you, could you see him sort of being the future Liverpool goalkeeper? Um, and he said, no, not with Alisson, either, because um, Shields reckon Alisson's the best goal ge- goalkeeper he's seen uh, for a long, long time. He said he reckons he's, he's even better than Petr Cech as well. I mean, that's a, no, that's a big statement. Absolutely. You know? absolutely. Do you agree, Mark? Yeah, it, 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 well, here's one for you. You're talking about arguably the best goalkeeper in the world comes from somebody like Schultz, yeah? And and then should we then be surprised that this guy who's now become on so good, how much of that credit goes to, to, to Beckham because he's working with him every single day and he his support he was showing him. He's not in any way jealous that he's not playing in that game with being even when they celebrate later, he brings the kid up and nothing else. He's happy for the lads. He realises there's bigger things to come and he's going to be in a squad game. Apparently, he's been great helping him and supporting him on, on, on the training field. So he's learning from the best. Patience is the hardest thing, I think. Um, we've not had this before, I don't think, this problem. We, 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 we've been worried if anyone comes in, Adriano or somebody else. We've had a good number one, but not necessarily a, a good understudy. And it's like every, every sport position is... That guy, what's his value going up to as a loan, which is great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Know, with, with yeah. The God's going to go up, but other teams will want him. I yeah. think it's good that we've got someone competing, but it's keeping them happy. But another testament to how well he's done is sometimes you, a player's only five, six games, an outfield player. Five, six games, whether it's Cato or whoever, and they'll have, they'll have dips and forms, but they'll sometimes, as soon as they get to, and the Ox and people like that, They'll, they'll look a bit rusty for the couple of games and they get five, four, five games again and they look, up, they look like they're ready for part of the team again. These goalkeepers, he's sitting there cold. Mm. Sitting there cold week upon week yeah. over these things and getting a shot. It comes in, doesn't doesn't look a piece out of, out of place. I know it's different from a goal. You don't have to be messy, sharp as in fitness, but sharp as in you're actually to say. He even talked about that's why, Klopp said himself, that's why two weeks before in the, in the semi that he played Becker in the first half brought him in because he's been away with the internationals usually and then he was injured and then he was making sure that he had some sort of sharpness for the weekend game. So, I I, you know, I just think, what a, what a young talent. Um, yeah, it'd be great to say that. Can we keep him for five, six years and then bring... Listen, I don't think that you can keep anybody sort of that thing. And um, and I do think you're right as well, Keith. You know, um, goalkeepers can go into the early 40s and I think we've, we've, we've got the best. And, you know, ideally, yeah, we need a squad, but... Yeah, I, I, I just, well, it's going it, to be hard to keep him in a couple of years if it, it, as a number two, I think. Yeah, I think, I mean, you made a good point there about um, how much he's worth. Now, we've seen Ward go to Leicester for 12 million and he doesn't get a, a game for, for Leicester. 12 no. million he went for. He no. couldn't lace Kelleher's boots, you know. No. Um, it, this lad is worth a, a massive amount now. Um, and I think also it gives us the opportunity, likes of Adrian, um, I think he, he should take, um, he's behind the scenes, he's, 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 he's quite a good influence, Adrian. Yeah, looks so, but yeah. a, a, a big shout out to my mate John um, Achterberg. Um, John is he's the hardest working coach out there, honestly. I mean, that guy is just phenomenal, honestly, absolutely unbelievable. Um, spends hours. He's and and Cop said that didn't even give him a lot of credit. The week said, "Listen, forget our recruiting staff. Forget me." You should, and, and some um, applauders need to go to John. He did say that, didn't he? Did you see that? And he said, okay. he said, him that brought his name to my attention. It was him. It was John after Beg that said, "We need to look at this guy. This is the guy we need to buy." He gave applauders right. to him, Keith. So um, I think that you can find that. that I, I, and you know what? Cause, that goes a long way as well from Pop. He's not yeah. just like Hyman Brown or whatever go and knowing he's taking yeah. all the glory. John got a lot of praise for that. It was his name, him that brought his name towards his attention. It was two weeks ago. I think I've seen that. That interview with Klopp. So, so yeah, so make sure that feeds back to him. So I think that's, you know, yeah. John's been, been a great, great serve in the club. And I know people who know him as well around this area. Um, he donated a lot of stuff charity when we did a, we did a Hillsborough night for the, for the play and um, donated, uh, well, time got, Pepe to give some of his stuff to his training and he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes not only yeah. fans but the charity and stuff and he's meant to just be an absolute top bloke so he is yeah just before we wrap up we're pretty confident that Henderson will be lifting another piece of tin 
before May, how many of the four gonna, are we going to I'm win? Gonna, well, I'm going to predict um, Champions League. I just think the introduction of Diaz now to the, to the squad, it gives us another dimension. And a dimension that, you know, once we, could you imagine having a full physical... I mean, I would like, personally, midfield, I would actually like to see um, Thiago, Fabinho, and a fit Cater. I'd like to see Cater in that midfield. Um, because I could see Fabinho being a defensive midfielder with um, Thiago pulling the strings and Cater going forward. Because out of the midfielders that we've got, I mean, although Fabinho scored a few uh, since New Year, if out of the midfielders, if there's anyone from midfield who can score a goal for us, is 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 not the case yet. Um but could you imagine as well having the choice between Diaz, Mane, Salah, Firmino, and Yotta and, and Divokarigi? It's crazy. It, there's no other forward line. I'm sorry, there is no other forward line. I know you've got Messi and um, Neymar at uh, PSG, but I'm sorry, there's no other better forward line in world football at the moment. Mm-hmm. Champions League, what about the League and FA Cup? Well, it just depends on City. City have been very, very lucky this season with injuries. Very, very lucky. And I'd like to see how they would cope with with some injuries, especially defensively. Um, But, you see, I look at City and I just think, you know, um, they're a great team, don't get me wrong, and and, uh, Guardiola's a a fantastic um, manager. But, they, I mean, Grealish hasn't pulled up any trees. And I just look at this one, I think, if you just had a few injuries, I think you'd struggle, I really do, you know. Um, we have to, so, yes. I think it's going to be close, but the thing is, as well, last weekend's decision for the penalty yeah. could go against us at the end of the season, but the, the same two clowns officiated the Spurs game when Kane should have got sent off. Yeah. And what I couldn't understand with that, I'm going off a little bit off the cuff here, sorry. What I couldn't understand with that is why Kavanagh, Chris Kavanagh, who was VAR, didn't tell um, Tierney to go and have a look at the Kane instance and go and have a look at the handball to, to see for himself. But he told him to go and have a look at the Robertson instance. So what's the difference? I don't That's care what the it, 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 It's the inconsistency what drives any football fan, and there's too much money in the game now today. Whether, whether we, oh, don't get me wrong. What I was trying to say there is that could all come down. We we could have gone on and beat Spurs, and um, Everton could have um, drew with City there. So that's four points difference there. I could have made all the difference at the end of the season. So yeah. if for any reason we we mess out by between one and four points. Reference then in, yeah. Tierney and Kavanagh, uh, uh, we should, should be held accountable for, for that because yeah. it's you're, um, you're saying almost, Champions League, so as well for the rest of the season. I, I think Champions League, but I just I, I, I've just got a sneaking feeling for the, for the title as well. I think the title yeah. could be ours as well. Yeah, I think, I think we did the tra- the 12 points, they're too busy focused on the 12 points. They went looking, we've had two games in hand, and you know, with anything, they're putting pressure on themselves, so we. I love the fact that that hasn't then put pressure on us and we've just gone about it and we've done what we've done. I, I think City went to that game against Tottenham, like, like we would have, uh, if I'm honest, a few years back where we just thought we can... Some games we used to say we just turn up and win and then the other games we didn't have to battle for. And I think that's in, the, in their locker. Whereas right now, we're just, we're just we're not treating anyone with any disrespect. It doesn't matter if it's West Ham or anyone we're going in there and doing whatever else, except for that one game a few weeks back. And I just think that... I, I, just something about the Burnley game. I watched Burnley a few times. And then, you know what, Sean, Sean, Sean Dice at Burnley, I think they've got them to come there. They've got, I know we've got United as well, and so they, but I have far more fear they'll raise their game there than what we will with us. And I do, I think it's there the same. Get the game and out of the way again. The game against them is massive. No, no dispute. Six points. We can't be affording to lose that. And we'll then, beat them, Mark. We'll I, beat I, them. I we'll beat them. Right. You know, I, yeah. I think you're right. If you were to predict how many. Of the four, of the three remaining cups, Mark, we're going to do. No, me, 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 me heart says four, but my head says there'll be something there. And listen, if we finish with two, it'll still be a success. So Absolutely. I'll go somewhere in the middle and take three. Great stuff. The fans of the podcast will know Mark had a very uh, 
memorable encounter with Sivir Berlusconi in Istanbul, which he might be sharing around the countryside in the coming months. So watch this, watch this space. And it might be a, a rerun of the podcast as well when I'd be asking about it. So we won't say too much just yet, but keep watch this space for details. Or did Boris go on his heart show with tickets to the San Siro the other week, Mark? No? No, he didn't. So I'm still waiting for that Christmas card off him as well. So uh, if you see him, tell him. Yeah. Pull we'll, bring it up. Well, we'll, we'll put in an invite for him to come to the to come to the, the tour as well. That, that could be good. <laughs> the 17 year <laughs> being reunited again with okay. his old buddy. I think yeah. I've got more chance part of waking up the horse's head in bed with me tomorrow morning, <laughs> to be honest with you. Guys, thanks a million for coming on. I'm looking forward to having me on more regularly as well as the weeks go on as the title race heats up, just to get your analysis on it. So thanks. Yeah, that'd be Paul, Paul, Paul Drake, I was just going to say, if we can come on again, I've got a number of events coming up now. Uh, as you know, um, we've got the Ireland event, we've got Dublin, Limerick and Cork with the Irish, uh, the Liverpool yeah. legends. We've got a number in, on the Whittle in Liverpool and just to let people know, if you know anyone who's uh, Everton, Man United, Newcastle, as a, as a business, I'm looking at holding events at 92 league clubs for legends over the next uh, 12 months. So, um, yeah. Right, so we'll put your contact details into, into, the, into the description there. So, let's, listen, thanks for joining us this evening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notifications bell for any videos and updates. If you're listening on an audio only Podbean and Spotify, click follow. Tune into the vlog channel, Pitch Spotting with Podrick. Loads of exciting vlogs to come. So thanks again to Mark here for coming on. Thanks you guys for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on the Parallel with Padre podcast. Good night. God bless. Cheers. God bless. Good to see you.